knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I'm all back down. I am not an African American. You're Oreo cookie. White in the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I would slap you. Go ahead. Make my day. Black at the ace of spades, but 100. 100% American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show. I have with me Christine Rossell. She's a 20-year-old college student at Providence College in Rhode Island. Uh, she's a writer for the collegeconservative.com. And, in, and her work has appeared in The Blaze, On The Blaze, Hot Air, MSNBC, and The Washington Post. Uh, Christine recently wrote an article that gained national attention called My Time at Walmart. And uh, she said the article is why we need serious welfare reform. And uh, people, I'm told that people are calling Christine the next Ann Coulter. Uh, she worked for Walmart and she saw some real stuff going on with welfare. Christine, good morning. Happy New Year. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate you coming on. Um, how long did you work for Walmart? I worked there for three months during the summers of 20, um, 2010 and three months in 2011. And um, you saw a lot of stuff going on with uh, folks who were on welfare. Give us some example of what you saw. Um, I saw people who didn't have any kind of shame of using, being on public assistance. They were buying things like steak and lobster and $45 birthday cakes and things that weren't really necessary just for like staying alive. They clearly weren't starving or destitute. And um, I was told that these people who were on welfare would come in with iPhones and and uh, they were buying things like slap, uh, slip and slide. What is slip and slide? I don't um, know what that is. It's a toy that you play on outside, like on a hot summer day. Like it's, you spray it down with a hose and kind of just slide head first on it. Oh, okay. So <laughs> um, it's true now that the government, instead of giving them the food stamps, they have what looked like a credit card, right? Yep, I'd never actually seen one until I started working at Walmart, and I did my own research into the subject. It's called an EBT card. Right. And why would Walmart sell these items to these folks who are on welfare? Isn't there, I mean, don't they know not to do that? Um, well, if the transaction goes through the computer, there's nothing a cashier can do about it. The people that bought the non-food items use the cash side of the card, which is uh, mostly from temporary assistance from needy family money, which is just cash given to the person from the government <laughs> can be sent on anything. Isn't that amazing? Um, you write about the people attitude. Tell us about that. Uh, they were just very generally like I'd say 90% of the customers who were yelled at me at some point were on some form of state aid. Um, one woman started screeching at me when a register screwed something up and said that peppers weren't food, but they were, so I fixed it, which took about 45 seconds, but she was screaming at me and <laughs> I've you know, been grocery shopping with my mom for I'm, I'm 20 years, so about that time, and I've never once seen her start, like, screaming at the cashier, threatening the cashier, calling the cashier names, and I had all that happen to me when I worked at Walmart. And that's a very good point. When I was reading uh, your about your article last night and what you went through at Walmart, I, I realized that when you spoil people like that, they become mean and nasty and feel that you owe them something for some reason. Oh, absolutely, and that was that really frightened me almost. I was like, wow, it's like I'm seeing a large child in front of me. Did you ever talk to the bosses there at Walmart about these people buying items that they should not be allowed to buy as a result of being on welfare? If so, what did they say about it? Um, well, I'd be, like the coworkers and I, we talk about it amongst ourselves, like the ridiculous purchase of the day. One day I had somebody buy uh, two Kit Kats and five pairs of earrings with state money. <laughs> and... Um, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. If it goes through the register, it goes through the register. We have to, we can't just stop the sale. So yeah. there's nothing we really can do. Our hands are tied, but we all, like, I've had nothing but, like, positive results from my coworkers about this article. They're all thanking me daily for publishing it. You're no longer working for them now, Walmart, right? No, I no longer work for them. Uh, oh. Transferring from Walmart to Walmart is a hard process for some reason. Yeah. And I go to school in Providence, Rhode Island, so, and I live in Maine. 
So when, it's hard to switch. Let's say that you were at Walmart. Would you have been allowed to speak out about this? I without honestly, any consequences. I'm not sure. I don't remember signing any kind of confidentiality agreement. There's no like HIPAA or FERPA for working in a at a supermarket. Um, it probably, I probably wouldn't have done it had I still worked there just for, you know, fear of my life. But, um, I honestly have no clue. I haven't heard anything from Walmart, the corporation, apart from my like coworkers thanking me. So like no one from like Walmart corporates like contacted me and, you know. Once they won't. Those haven't gotten me yet. So yeah, once in a while I go to the supermarket and I notice that there are people in line in front of me and they have those uh, uh, those cars that the government issue out to them, and they come in and get cash from the uh, cashier with those cars. Yeah, through um, EBT Cash, which is the temporary assistance for needy family money, you can get cash back. And the first time that happened, my mouth actually like reflexively just dropped open. I had no idea you could do that. And that concerns me, too, because you don't know where that money's going to. Like, the man withdrew $100 in cash. It could be spent on anything, like a tattoo, a drug, yeah. like legitimate purposes. But it just like you'd think the government would like to know where it's being spent. I know for a fact, because I've seen it happen, and I know people who are doing it, they go in and get cash with those cars, and they go out and buy drugs and alcohol. And I've seen it happen time and time again. And that's why I'm amazed that the cashier would just give out the money. But it sounds as though... The cashiers don't have any other choice because as long as the car at work, they have to abide by that. Yeah, we have no choice in the matter. Like, people have been criticizing me for not reporting everything I saw, but, I mean, I didn't know the the customer's name or address, which is both required for reporting someone. And it's not like I could just ask afterwards, like, oh, can I have your name, please? Like, that wouldn't go through. I'd be fired from my job. Wow. I, I, uh, when I was younger, I worked for supermarkets, and at the time they were giving out food stamps. Mm-hmm. And whenever uh, a, a customer would come in and they try to buy items that were not, uh, you know, you couldn't eat, we're, we were not allowed to sell it to them because we said, no, you, you can't buy this item. It's not, you can't eat it. And so we had a little bit more control over that than we do today. Yeah, I think the system definitely needs to be reformed. I would support going to something like the WIC program where you have like a list of allowed foods versus like, just free reign, which I've seen people buy 64 cans of Mountain Dew on state money. Like, that's not good for your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I want to talk about um, the type of reaction that you've gotten as a result of writing this article, especially being a student in, in, at a college. And I've spoken at different universities around the country, and I, I've realized that one thing that white folks cannot do is tell the truth about what's happening, whether it's about welfare reform or racist, racism or whatever, you're not allowed to tell the truth. What type of slack have you gotten as a result of writing this article? I've been called pretty much every name in the book, positive and negative. <laughs> um, a lot of people had a lot of like racial, like they're calling me a racist and stuff, but I live in Maine. Like Maine is not a state known for diversity. Yeah. And so I thought that was particularly troubling that they assumed I was writing about the black community when I, in fact, was not. Christine, hold that thought. Let me take a quick break. 888-775-3773. We're going to tell you how to keep up with Christine's work right after this break. 